how do we start this video? Hi, how are you? Terrific, how are you? I'm colorblind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forget how, uh, how did this all start? Well, I think I was, I was playing Doom and I was very impressed by that game. Because graphically, like, the game looks amazing. And then you made that video on Doom and everyone commented, why did this game look like shit? And I watched the video and yeah, it looked like crap. And it was because you you had colorblind mode. Enabled. I had the colorblind mode enabled because. But well, I but I remember you saying that wow, Doom looks amazing too. So at that point, I was like, okay, so do all the games look like crap? But he can't tell that they look like crap. In specific terms, what Doom does is basically applying a filter to to the screen. Right. Uh, so it enhances the contrast a little bit more and mm -hmm. maybe the brightness. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't really tell for sure. Right. <laughs> so I can. Uh, Distinguish more more the environment and the, the enemies. From a non-colorblind point of view, I think what Doom does is apply this layer of green on top exactly. of it all. And maybe it doesn't apply to stuff like ammo crates, health pickups, the stuff that you really want to see, you want it to pop out. I, I think it does something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem here is that you have several types of color blindness. Uh, right. And uh, different filters apply to, to each, each type. But it, it's not like an on and off thing. It's not all colorblind people are the same. Uh, exactly. Right. Uh, and even colorblind people of the same type of colorblindness are not the same. What, what like the, they have different intensities of? Exactly. Okay. It's, like, it's like a different intensity of, of that filter. So that filter should, should be able to, to have like a, a slight adjustment bar so you can enable that in to, according to your color blindness. So like slide this bar until yeah. th this icon looks different from this icon, something like that. Exactly. Okay. There are games that that, that do that okay. uh, right any, now. Any examples? Uh, yeah, Overwatch. How Overwatch does it, it's like you, you choose the colorblind type and you choose the sliding, the, the slider bar mm -hmm. uh, on the amount you want for that for that filter to, to be applied on the mm -hmm. screen. And that gives you some detail on the characters. It also changes the, the color names, the the name, name tags on okay. top of the, the characters yeah. as well. And so some contrast a bit, but Overwatch does it best. I think an important thing to point out is that it's not only that you can't see colors, uh, or rather you can't distinguish between a right. specific different colors, but because you've seen like this your entire life, you tend to not think of color as often as we do. Whereas if a game is doing some kind of color coding, it's telling us, oh, uh, the ground is red here, that means an explosion is about to happen. Yeah. Because you don't think of colors as much, you tend to not notice that type of stuff, unless it's like super obvious and super obvious, it super bright. Uh, usually, if you, like if it's a super bright red uh -huh. on like a white background or a blue background, I cannot notice that like perfectly. Right. Or uh, if there's a tutorial message, then you'll keep an eye on it. But if it yeah, just it sort just of drops you the, there in the middle of the game, it's like oh, it's going to be an explosion here. I don't care. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. even know that's okay. gonna, that's about to happen. Um, but it's like you said, uh, like. Like I've been getting colors wrong all my all my life, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't pay attention to colors because mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna get that wrong, so my brain shut down the color part. Huh. And just I doesn't think about it. Just, just doesn't yeah. think about it. They are they are there, and I can see them. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think about it. Okay. They're just. There. Yeah, like until last week, you thought the legendary Super Saiyan was also yellow. Yeah, well, apparently, <laughs> apparently it's green. Who? <laughs> who you know? I think game companies are, are starting to pay more attention to this detail. There, okay. there were, you know, several cases before that uh, that companies did this all right, mm -hmm. but most of times, uh, and especially in, on older games, you don't have that type that type of care mm. uh, when you're building that game. Uh, one good example of that was Tony Hawk Proving Ground. Proving Ground had one one type of content there. It was really hard for people to do, even if you're not colorblind. Okay. That involved uh, making a series of, of tricks uh, in, in succession, like uh, manuals, grinds, and, and air combos, mm -hmm. uh, while grabbing some pellets, Pac-Man style. Right. Those pellets were in the air, they, those were on rails, on, on things you could manual through. Yeah. Uh, we even with cheat codes on, that mm -hmm. game was freaking hard. But there was one problem for me ex specifically, that was the manual and the rails uh, combo had different colors, that uh -huh. was yellow and green. Oh, your worst nightmare. But wouldn't Oof. rails show up on rails and manuals show up on the ground? Sometimes, because, but you know, you can grind not only on rails, but you can grind on, uh, you know, curbs and right. stuff like that. But yeah. you can also manual on curbs. Okay. So how do you distinguish a rail right. from a curb when one, one pallet on top of that is yellow or green? Yeah, yeah. You, you can't. can't distinguish, yeah. 
sure. you can't. And that game was freaking hard. Uh, puzzle games, it's one great example of that. Axic, for instance, at a colorblind mode, which just turns the game more confusing because you actually have to look at the symbols that are on, on the screen. Right. So to, to prevent you from not being able to distinguish colors, they give each color a symbol. It's, yeah, but then you have to double your attention on the game. Yeah, it's a lot harder. Like if I if I had to match symbols, that's a, a lot harder to do than matching. That, that it's like an extra yeah. layer of difficulty. One hundred percent. Yeah. Curiously enough, uh, Puzzle Bubble, which is probably one of the first games that yeah. uh, I thought was gonna have str uh, I was gonna struggle on, on this, actually does this pretty well because each bubble inside there's a monster. And each monster is different. Oh, so you just match the monsters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the blues and the, the white ones, the light blue ones are kind of easy enough to distinguish. Uh -huh. But when you, you get to the greens and the yellows, once again, the green and the you yellow. Just look at the monsters. Yeah, I look at the monsters and say, okay, this one goes there and the one that has like and a it's a lot inside. faster to, to match those than matching like random symbols. Or yeah, like yeah. You, you match a plus and a minus and, you know, a cross. So like, what? What the hell is this? You know, and mm -hmm. spe specifically on Exec, you rotate those symbols and those symbols rotate as well. Yeah. Uh, which gets even more confusing. Oh, so there are clever ways to do. This there sort are of clever stuff. ways to do. Yeah. I think, um, you know, Resident Evil Four. Resident Evil Four. Resident Evil Four had a lot of of puzzles that uh, used color. Right. So you can, you know, open some contraption or open a secret room right. or something. Most of those secret rooms stay, remain unlocked for me. <laughs> did you realize it was a, a color puzzle, or did you just get I, there? And no, I, I know that like... I, I know that is, that's a color puzzle because okay. you look at that and you see there are different tones. Uh, you can you have to match, hmm. but what are exactly those tones? And some tones are just really similar to each mm -hmm. other, uh, and I just skip that. If so, those are optional. I usually skip that. Mm -hmm. uh, if those are kind of the main quest thing, I usually go look at the walkthrough. I remember you playing an adventure game last year. You uh, reviewed that game. That was Army Krog. Yeah. Which Army was a Krog. really fucking great game. Yeah. And it had a section that had colors. And you called me on Skype and you said, okay, look at this color sequence. Repeat this color sequence to me later in the game or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was uh, like too far again or something. I don't really remember. But yeah, uh, yeah that I remember calling you on Skype and saying, I can't really do this because, you know, color blindness and all that. And it was the one puzzle, like the whole game was fine for you. The whole but game that was one super, puzzle. super, super easy on, on that note. But that specific puzzle for me was like a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Uh, because there was no way I could do that on my own. Do you have any idea, like, in AAA action-adventure games, like, let's think of the most generic thing, uh, Prey, you played it recently. I played Prey. Do you have any idea of the struggles you would face in a game like that if there wasn't a colorblind mode? Is there a colorblind mode for Prey? I haven't noticed that. Okay, Actually, so you just played it. I just played it, right. uh, because I didn't think there was nothing I I needed to know the colors for. So in general, it's not a problem, unless it's something... Especially on action games, it's not mm. a really big problem, because it's, it's like, if there's a, a queue, like you said, like a grenade is about to pop up, usually there, there's like um, a really big enough queue. Like there's arrows pointing everywhere. Yeah, and there's the big usually circle. an icon that shows uh, grenade, it, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a, a thing like, like okay, th there's danger here. Even if I don't tell the colors, there's something big enough on the screen that I can yeah. tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, most problems are with puzzle games for sure, and puzzle games are, na are a nightmare. Things where you have crafting, that's probably one of, one of the reasons I don't really like crafting, when you have to combine different things from different colors. Like oh. you have to find an ore first, an ore that's green and an ore that's red, okay. and another one that's yellow, and combine them to form something, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think that's super common though. Um, like usually it's like a stick and some stone. Uh, but yeah, you have, you have those things, uh, yeah, like Dark, Dark Souls. Dark Souls have, have some some type of gems that if I don't read the description, I don't know what those gems do. Right. If there's text, that I'm okay. But okay. I, I can't look at the stone and say, oh, this, this is that stone. Ah. It's usually I have to go and read through the whole description to know what right. those things does. Yeah. Um, it takes you an extra second to realize what that is and then you die. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I usually leave that when I'm on the bonfire <laughs> so I don't die. So a, a while back, I was doing a research to make this specific video, not yeah. in this way. Yeah. Uh, but I went to Reddit and I, I asked the question, uh, I'm a colorblind gamer, ask me anything. Yeah. And, and no one asked you. There was one specific question, which I really didn't get it, which was, 
a piano puzzle from what? Silent Hill. What? Yeah, but I, I've never played Silent Hill. Are there colors on the piano? I, I guess. I don't know. Right. But I, I'm about to go check it out just to see what happens there. <laughs> What there, would you do if it was like a color, like you'd, you'd have to call someone or you'd give so up? That was Silent Hill 2, so probably 2000s. Yeah. Gamefacts.com. Game and the facts. walkthrough says, okay, press the green first and then the yellow. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> that happens, actually. Uh, so I need to, or, or I ask someone or in the, in the walkthrough, there's some mm -hmm. like press the first key the, from the left, press the, f the fifth key, go right. and counting from the right. And I was like, okay, that, that's, that's how you do it. But basically there was one guy that said, Said, uh, hi, I'm the developer of this game, and he sent me a, um, a GIF yeah. about a game called Chroma Gun, yeah. and asked me to review how how they handled the colorblind mode because that's a game where you basically it's like Portal, but you have a, a gun that shoots colors. So colors is the main theme. Color is yeah. like the main theme there, uh, and you have to combine cert certain colors so you can get through the puzzles. Yeah. Uh, there are robots that are attracted to to those colors, and you have to combine them in in all possible ways so you can get through the level. And you have three three main colors, mm -hmm. the the primary car colors, right? And then you have to combine to combine those colors and get the next one. If yeah. you combine all three, you have to get black. Yeah, okay, as, as obvious. And I was thinking, okay, I I couldn't play this for sure with uh, default mode on. Mm. Because there was no way I'm going to combine like yellows and greens. I, I for sure wouldn't even know what there was going on there. But then they added one simple stuff that actually helped a lot. And of course, we're talking about the very limited uh, color scheme there. Yeah. And they added symbols. Okay. On the on top of those colors, which, which was a problem in the exact game. Yeah, but exec, exec is like there, 20, there 20, 12, colors. twenty colors. Twenty okay. colors. There, there's a lot of colors. Here on there exec. are six. And there are there are like all mixed up. Right. Like it's like a big block of symbols hmm. going there. You have, it's like it's like making a crossword puzzle. Hmm. You have a lot of a lot of different words scattered there, but if you don't look closely, you you can see it because it's just mumbo jumbo there. Yeah. But on that game, it's like you have a, a wall of green, a wall of yellow, and each time you look at the, at those, um, it's like yellow. It's a minus, uh, but it's like there's a, a minus symbol, there's an, up, an upward stroke, yeah. and if you combine those two colors, you get a plus. So that's, that, that's clever. It's combining the symbols as well. Okay. Exactly. Uh, you have like circles. If you combine a circle and a, and a minus, you, yeah. you have like a. Okay. Uh, so so that, that's that's how they do it's it. Really smart. Yeah. It's it was a really smart way. And I said, okay, this looks like the most uh, accurate thing to help a colorblind play this game as well. Because if you're yeah. colorblind, you're, not, you're never gonna get through this game without any help. And he said, okay, I, I'm the developer of this. If you want, if you want, yeah, I can give you a key and you can test it out. I played a little bit. And it just it just works, you know. It's it's perfect because I don't even need to look at the colors. Mm -hmm. I just point the gun there. I see the symbol that's that's matching okay. up. That's I can easy. combine the colors like with no effort at all, mm. which is really cool. And I think that's probably the game I I saw that handles color blindness the best. All right, uh, there's a color blind gamer right here. Ask him anything you guys want. He'll be in the comments answering questions. Uh, feel free. Give I'll him be a hard time. I'll be specifically in the comments. My body and spirit will be there. We have su successfully digitized Fajitas. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave us a like if you want more videos like this. And uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, watch some of our previous stuff, like uh, our E3 coverage or something else. If you're in the mood for something else. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye.